Right, thanks very much, Connell. Well, you think prices are getting high over here. The price of goods in China is 9% higher than it was last year. We'll be taking a look at the inflation situation around the world in just a moment. But right now, it's been six months since Ben Bernanke made his first Fed rate cut. And when he did, he said he would see the effects or we would see the effects in about six months, or so say economists. Well, here we are. Well, Tom Cooley is the NYU Stern School of Business professor. Hal Ravash? Ravashe. Ravashe. All right. I'm sorry. This was Stevens okay, Institute early. of Technology. And our own Fox Business contributor, Eric Bowling, is here. Speaking of Ravashe. Oh, ah. you're very cute. I, I have a color on today. They're probably great. like doing high fives upstairs. <laughs> okay. Um, seriously, Hal, let's, let's get started with you. You know, the, the one thing that everybody suggests, or at least economists suggest, is that when the Fed starts to cut rates, you start to see results about six months to a year after you, you start to see Fed rate cuts. Are we starting to see results, or are we worse off today than we were six months ago? I think it's a lot. I just returned. I'm on nighttime now. I just returned from India, Korea, Taiwan, Malaysia, and Singapore. Right? The mood there, I go there regularly. The mood has changed from concern to have you lost your way. They don't see us having any optimism, any courage to take a risk, and we don't make anything anymore. So we need a whole national agenda for innovation, innovation in everything we do. Healthcare, the way we conduct R&D, our models for technology transfer at universities, the way we educate our K through 12. And unless we focus on this big issue, these short-term uh, steps in lowering the interest rates are going to go nowhere and it'll get worse that we are in a slow death and we need a national agenda for innovation. It's a, it's a serious issue and no leader has taken this up. The Republicans shy away from anything that smells like an industrial policy. The Democrats tend to use this as an so, opportunity for social engineering and we have gridlock and nothing is happening. All right, uh, you know, Tom, I, I guess number one, I guess I would say to you, do you agree? And number two, how much of it is not only the Federal Reserve Bank and what they have done to fuel the credit markets or to try and reinvigorate this economy, but also a national energy policy? Because right now, energy and inflation is probably our number one issue. Well, I, I agree with Hal in, in the sense that innovation is what drives the economy. There's no question that productivity is what drives the American economy and always has. Um, on the other hand, I think that the Federal Reserve was faced with a, a critical problem, the meltdown in credit markets, the loss of liquidity in the financial system. And they did two things, as well as a, uh, a declining confidence in the economy. They did two things. One was to try to shore up the credit markets. And I think on that score, uh, they've done very well. The other thing that they did was to try to aggressively lower interest rates. And the question now is, when are we going to see the effects of that and did they go too far? So I think one of the big concerns is that what we see now is a weak dollar, um, rising inflationary pressures. We haven't seen the inflation throughout the economy yet. And I think there's a lot of concern about whether we're in for a period like the 1970s. The 1970s were a period of high commodity prices, uh, low, weak dollar, and eventually uh, high inflation. Okay. Erica, uh, let, let, me, let me turn to you for a moment because, you know, I said one of the issues is clearly the weak dollar, a rising price of energy. But one of the probably the overriding number one issue on this whole thing and is why we are where we are are the decline in home prices, and they're not getting any better. Not yet. Not yet. And, and I think Tom hits it on the head that, that the Fed did the right thing. They solved, the, or at least temporarily solved, the credit crisis. Next on, <clears throat> on board is solving the home price slide, which is going to correct itself by, by this means, a 2% Fed funds rate, an inventory overhang that's starting to slow, home builders starting to slow their building process. And what that means is it's just a matter of time before home prices start to firm. Now, think about what happens when home prices start to firm. Everything starts to firm because this is really the impetus behind the economy going from, you know, a 4 or 5% growth rate to maybe under 1% this year. Um, and, and when that home price turns, I think the whole thing looks good. And I'm, I'm very, very bullish. And I just have to make one point, Hal. Dying a slow death. No, sir. No, sir. You take the financials out, and corporate earnings are up almost 9% year but over year. But the fundamentals aren't there. We have left an important part of our 
our population out, right? So we need to create opportunities for all Americans to have a decent job. They can't be working for Walmart. In 1970, 25% of our GDP was in manufacturing. We've given up the ghost. We can have $30 an hour manufacturing jobs with benefits if we were more innovative. We have given, we go the easy way. And we have fallen for the argument that if you manufacture in China, you have access to those markets. Guess what? Singapore manufactures at home, Taiwan does, Japan does, and Korea, and they all do better than us in trading in China. That's because so it's a whole that's folklore. Super. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. No, I mean, they I was still manufacture gonna... at home. They still manufacture at home. They manufacture at home, but there are the incentives components. in place to do it, and it's much cheaper to manufacture. Manufacture those goods you overseas. You do so the high tech manufacturing. Look at our Bellwether company now. Look at mm -hmm. Boeing, right? This is manufacturing at a super level. It's a systems integrator. Now they, they're late on the Dreamliner, they're late on military products, and they lost the, the uh, refueling. If but, we don't have but, innovation in our companies. But, but, look, but then look at Microsoft yeah. and, and look at some of the software companies. We're, we are now Google. exporting, exactly. we're exporting yes. not manufactured goods, we're exporting, we're uh, we're exporting ideas. ideas. But we're not it's ideas money. that have driven the Guess prosperity what now? Guess of Guess what's going to Bangalore beyond for a IT? Long time. GE is opening a polymer factory there, a polymer our research and development center. The pharmaceuticals are opening up. From, so we're going to lose all kinds of jobs. We tell our students, if you're just a good engineer and scientist, you have to be. It's not enough. You have to learn how to add value to your organization immediately. If you're not innovative, you're lost. All right, Tom, Singapore's on fire. Okay, Taiwan's right, on fire. I, I love your enthusiasm, and I think you raise a lot of really important points. Tom, let me turn to you, because a lot of people did not react, I would argue, or some would argue, as aggressively yesterday to what the Fed did, because all eyes are on tomorrow's employment number. Now, in the first quarter, we saw a loss of about 215,000 jobs. Usually in a recessionary period, Period, you lose about 250 to 300,000 jobs a month. Yeah. Now, there are expectations that in the financial world, we, will, we may lose 20% uh, of Wall Street jobs. How bad is it going to get, and how do we replace those jobs? Well, I think it will get slightly worse in the financial sector before it gets better. But we will replace those jobs with innovation and education and new ideas. That's what drives the economy. That's the most important thing. I think you're right that the markets were not impressed with the Fed's moves. And it wasn't just because it was fully anticipated that they would do it, but I think that the markets are beginning to be a bit concerned that the Fed always finds something that's more important than inflation. Uh, so I think they're, they're ready to see a little bit stronger monetary stance. It's a great point. I, I couldn't agree more. When you looked at the statement yesterday, I, I, I was expecting this statement to suggest that inflation is the main concern and we're taking a pause. And they yeah. l it appears to me that it may be a temporary pause, but certainly not a long-term one, Eric. I, I, because the bigger risk to inflation and bigger risk to our economy is deflation right now. I, it, yes, high, oil prices are high, food prices are high. Take them out because they will go down. When oil goes down, food's going to go down and everyone's going to say, hey, okay, so inflation's not that issue. Deflation in the housing sector, in construction, in retail, you really run the risk of, a, of an economy grinding to a halt, which is way riskier than, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, Although you had a six-tenths of percent aggression. gain in GDP for the first quarter, a preliminary number, not a great one, but not as bad as the real bears we're talking about. It, it, things aren't that bad. Things that, was driven, that was driven largely by exports. Yeah. So, and also personal consumption was very low. Personal consumption actually grew in the first quarter, but uh, the biggest... The most important part of that is durables consumption, which fell significantly. So personal consumptions grew because of higher food. Fourth quarter over first yeah. quarter, not year over year. Exactly. Well, we can't yeah. look at simple. Last quick We word. have to look on the underlying issue. America is not competitive. What makes America competitive? It's people. We have to turn to our people. That's our greatest resource around the world. We have to rekindle the American spirit, and we need leadership from the top, and no presidential candidate, no Congress has dealt with this, right? We has to start now. Well, today. let's hope they're listening to you because I still <laughs> think we live in a great country. Uh, All right. Hal and Tom and Eric, a great debate. We could continue this for hours, I'm sure, but we have to actually turn upstairs because we got some breaking news. We want to go up